Okay, so people keep asking me the same questions over and over again, that's why I decided to make a separate video on it, to clear all kinds of misconceptions and questions you might have on it. So let's begin. Is this game like Storm's universe or insert any other game? No, comparing those games just because they have a similar HUD and, uh, well, camera angle is the same as if you would say that Injustice looks like Street Fighter or something. If you have good skills in Storm or Xenoverse or Burning Blood, that doesn't mean that you're going to jump into this game and suddenly you figured out all the combo structure and you are able to do a ridiculous amount of damage and you're pro at this game, you know the spacing and yara yara. No, but... Uh, Simply playing games with 3D environment can help you adjust to the game faster. Why do you need adjusting? Well, here comes the second question. Is it deep? Slow? Heavy? Floaty? What about the lock-on? Fighting in the air? On the walls? Nani? So does this game have depth? Sure. A lot of it, actually. Every character that I've tried so far feels unique, because you need to keep adjusting your game plan depending on the character. For instance, combos that you learned for Tokoyami will not work with Kirishima if you press the same buttons. The same goes for his game plan. If Kirishima feels himself good only in a very close-ranged combat and he wants to rush you down, Tokoyami feels great on almost every distance and only goes in when he knows that he's about to land that full combo. And up close there is always this mind game between whether your opponent is going to do an unblockable, going to just throw some kind of a move in order to pressure you, or is going to dash away to the neutral, or is going to bait one option and then do another option, so there are definitely some things to think about when you're playing. And just a side note, combos in this game feel very satisfying. It's like 2D combos in 3D environment. The closest thing, I guess, very simplified Tekken with a lot more freedom in cancels and gravity, plus the super bar, it's something to experience, not to tell. Let's say it like that. Is it slow, heavy, or floaty? You see if you're gonna move like this? Yeah, of course, it's gonna seem slow and heavy, but there is a special dash mechanic in the game that uh, is now yet explored, this is day two, okay? And it acts as the core of your movement. If you use it correctly, the game seems incredibly fast, and you only stop when you try to bait something out. But in general, the way this game works is the higher skill, the faster the gameplay. Is it floaty? Now, you see, a lot of people make it seem floaty, because almost every move in this game can be cancelled into the air dash, and whenever you air dash, it looks very wiggly, and because you're only supposed to do it uh, on the juggle, it looks very bad when you do it incorrectly, and that's why the game seems floaty. Plus, you can't block in the air, so all of your jumping and air dashes is crazy unsafe. So you only want to go in the air in three cases. First, you're dodging some projectile on the ground, so you predicted it and you decided, oh, I'm gonna go in and do a minor amount of damage. Second case. You were running away, jumping projectile type, which is where I'd say whenever you jump and shoot a projectile, you have to wait till you land down and then there is some kind of a recovery there. So if the dude just dashes around it, you're screwed. And the third, the most common reason, your combo. Even though there are some characters, uh, like Kirishima, for instance, who barely goes in the air when he's comboing. So he's just, oh, I'm grounded. Now about the lock-on, you are able to go in any direction, however, you're targeted to your opponent, meaning that at certain distance your character will just dash to him and attack, no matter which direction you're facing. So hitbox-wise and uh, locking-wise, let's say like that, this game is all good. However, with camera angles, sometimes it gets very messy and tricky and even may be the reason for you to drop in your combos. It's uh, wiggly and uh, I don't really like it at some points. Now, there is actually no wall combat in this game. The reason why I say it is because you can't really wall walk or wall stand. You're just allowed to kind of stand there for, I think three seconds at best, and then you're going to fall. So the way wall mechanic works in here is you do a wall splat, and if you see a wall splat, the game gives you a couple of seconds to stand on the wall and think, oh, well, how do I want to roll from here? But that's about it. Then you fall to the ground and the game continues uh, on the ground. 
Wall combat is not a big part of it. Think of it as a momentary transition in your combat extension, because you actually need to approach and do something with the wall in order to, you know, unstick your opponent from the wall and do damage. If that makes sense. Next question. How hard is it? Are there any broken characters that I can abuse? Well, so far nothing completely broken have been found, but this is a fighting game. In every fighting game there is a stage where people find out the best glitches, the best combos, the best teams, and then they abuse it until it's patched. I have no doubt that the same will happen to this game. It's just a matter of uh, whether developers care enough to patch this game or not. I also hear a lot of people saying that, oh my, they can summon supports while they're getting comboed, that's so cheap! But the thing is, you kind of have to bait out those supports, since uh, they're slow enough for you to stop and block there. And once you block them, those supports are not coming back for a while. And if you have some kind of a ranged attack, like Tokoyami, you can actually time that ranged attack and hit the support too. And it will not go up for a very long time. Does this break a pace which can lead to a Yoder downfall in the match? Yeah, but those act as a combo breaker, since characters in this game do a lot of damage, and in order to prevent two combo KOs in one round, supports exist. Yeah. How hard is this game? I guess it's slightly harder than Burning Blood, but you won't gonna take long to adjust. I think that after a day of playing, and staying in a training mode, you will know almost everything about this game. The rest is just matchup knowledge and experience. But that's also assuming that by the time you're getting this game, uh, there will be some videos and guides on the characters that you want to play, because if nothing is in there, then yeah, it's going to be kinda hard to invent all of those things. What about the netcode? Is there a ranking competitive system where I can show off my points to my friends? This game is currently only available in Japan, so I was uh, mostly only playing against Japanese players, and I usually had a very bad connection to Japan. But in this game, out of all the matches that I've played, only one was laggy. And there is always lag in the intro. Somebody said that maybe it's because of the Japanese servers, but this is how it works. So netcode is very stable and smoothly going as of now. The bad part about it is that you can't see the connection to your opponent. There are no bar indicators, no ping, no anything. You just have to guess whether this guy's going to be laggy or not. And this kinda sucks. And yes, there is a BP system in this game. Basically you get points, then you get ranks, and you go on top of the leaderboard. For the character and overall. Unfortunately, there is a lack of modes. There are no King of the Hill or Tournament. Only basic modes of player matches, ranked matches, and rooms, you know, if you want to play your friend in private or just find some randoms, and that's about it. Pretty dull. Is it worth it? Ugh. <sighs> Story mode in this game. Yeah, you're not buying this game for a single player, that's for sure. There are not enough features, I mean, there is this battle mode or trials. Anyway, everything related to single player mode always revolves around customization and you do everything for customization, but even if you just play online battles, you get the currency to unlock every customizable item, so it doesn't even matter. Unless you're planning to play this locally with your friends, single player is off the road. That leaves us multiplayer. This game doesn't have any original modes, so it's up to good old-fashioned fighting. It doesn't look pretty, but this game has one redeeming feature. It has good gameplay. I would recommend picking this up, but not at the full price. However, if you wait for too long till the price drop, 
when you actually get this game, people might get too pro and then you will get all tilted and drop it earlier than you should. But if you get it fast enough through some means or whatever by the reduced price, then I am 90% sure that at least three months is going to be very fun. Then it depends on the DLCs, it depends on the community, patching and yara yara. Personally, I don't even mind all the drawbacks of this game, there is just... It has no soul, you know, when you play Burning Blood and you see, oh, easter egg here, easter egg there, yeah, y you can feel that people put some soul into it. When you see Xeniverse and they try to come up with those modes, new characters, there is some life in it. This game, it's... It's so... I don't know, I can't pick up the word for it, maybe basic or something, I think that comment section will do it better for me. Hopefully this answers most of the questions that you had. Sorry for the not usual quality of this video, I just felt like we need answers, just simple talking video where people answer the questions. With that said, I'm gonna be also answering questions in the comment section for as much and long as I can, while making some juicy online matches videos for you. Bye!